Well, I've made a lot of framing videos, but I've never made a video on framing works on paper or works behind glass. And lately I've been getting a lot of requests to do that. So really there's all kinds of ways that you could frame works on paper. And probably the easiest way is to have your mat cut for you at a frame shop and then you make the frame and sandwich it all together. But if you want to make your own mat, there's a way that you can do that using quarter inch plywood and that's what I'm going to do in this video. This is the artwork that I'll be framing and I'm going to float the piece which means you'll see the edge of the paper. And the first step is to cut a base for the artwork to rest on and I'll cut the base an inch and a half larger than the artwork on all four sides. I'm using a piece of half inch MDF as my base and I'll build off of that. I want a piece of molding that measures a quarter of an inch by an inch and three eighths and that will act as my mat going around the painting giving me an eighth of an inch reveal between the edge of the molding and the edge of the painting. I had a scrap piece of prime quarter inch plywood and I've ripped it into inch and three eighths strips. Now I'll change the angle of my table saw to 45 degrees and cut a slight chamfer on the molding. Next I'll rip strips of quarter inch plywood at 13 sixteenths and band the outside edge. This will be a little bit above the mat holding the glass off the mat and the artwork. Okay, well I finished with the base. I filled the nail holes with joint compound and then I primed and painted the base using a stipple effect with the paintbrush to create a tooth or a texture that would resemble watercolor paper. And now I'm ready to move on to the frame. I've got a few really nice pieces of tiger maple and that's what I'm going to use for the frame. The boards measure two and a half inches wide so I'll set my saw fence at an inch and three sixteenths allowing for the eighth inch thickness of the blade and rip the boards in half. I've reset the fence and adjusted the height of the blade and next I'll cut a rabbit joint in all the molding. Now I've got all of my molding cut and I'm going to make a frame for the base to fit into and when I make the frame I'll make the opening about a sixteenth of an inch heavy so there's no problem fitting the base into the frame. I'll line the base up flush on one side of the miter and then on the other side I'll add about a sixteenth, maybe a little bit heavier than a sixteenth of an inch. I just finished spraying a few thin coats of lacquer on the frame downstairs and then I thought I'd come upstairs while that's drying and mount the artwork. Now I used to use a, a fabric tape, it's like a cloth tape that was acid free and I would make this hinge but I can't find the tape anywhere so I'm, I'm going to have to hang this painting a, a little bit differently or mount this painting a little bit different but I do have an old um, mat here and I thought I'd just show you what that looks like in case you want to try it. This is how I like to mount works on paper. It's a hinge made with acid free water activated fabric tape and the nice thing about it is you can remove the artwork simply by adding a little water to the back of the tape. 
Unfortunately, I can't find the tape, so I'll have to do something a little bit different for this painting. To lift the artwork off of the base a little bit, I've attached a piece of matte board to the base, just simply gluing it, and then I've glued strips of watercolor paper to the matte board with a little dab of glue at the top of each piece. Now I'll add a little dab of glue at the bottom, and that's how I'll mount the artwork. plexiglass over the artwork and I'm going to cut the plexiglass with my table saw and to get a cleaner cut I've taken the blade out of the saw and put it back in backwards. Once I've got the plexiglass on the artwork and I can see that there's no dust behind the glass, I use a piece of tape and I'll put the tape on the plexiglass about 16th to an eighth of an inch in. And what this does is it dust proofs your artwork and keeps any dust from getting back in behind the glass. Okay, well, I thought I should talk a little bit about why I screwed through the sides of the frame to hold everything together. And the main reason for that is the frame is very shallow and I had to make the frame shallow because I only had those two small pieces of tiger maple to work with. So if I had made the frame deeper, then I could simply sandwich everything together and nail a couple of brads in the inside of the frame. And that's usually how it's done. But I like the way this looks anyway. I made sure that I countersunk the holes and I used stainless steel screws. So it's, it's almost like a design element. Now I made this video with Matt Russo in mind because Matt bought one of my paintings off of my website and he sent me an email uh, asking me for tips on how to frame it. So I hope you found the video useful, Matt. Uh, the one thing I wouldn't do is attach the artwork the way I did here. I think that the hinged method is a much better way to go about it. So anyway, hope it was helpful. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.